my name is Julio Santos, and I'm a co-founder at Fractal. We're hard at work building the Fractal protocol, which will bring about radical markets for data. And joining me today is Trent McConaughey. Uh, he is the co-founder of the Ocean Protocol, uh, which will enable the sharing of AI data and locking siloed data securely and in a privacy-preserving manner. Trent, uh, welcome to our office here in Berlin. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, great. Good to see you. All right. So Fractal's beginning uh, starts with Ocean, actually, many, many years ago. Uh, so I thought that maybe uh, we could talk a little bit about our joint history. Um, how do you see that? Uh, sure. So yeah, and even before Fractal, we had known Julian for several years as part of the uh, um, Berlin entrepreneur ecosystem, basically. And so when you guys, uh, you know, in, in your founding days, we had basically worked with you guys for our um, token launch, and you guys, uh, Fractal, did the uh, KYC, so the identity platform um, around the token raise. So yeah, that's how we got going. And then um, from that, my co-founder Bruce uh, has been working closely with you guys, and he's we've, a good we've advisor. yeah, great, yeah, he's he's great to work with. And and then basically since then, we've um, you know iterated a, a fair bit, and of course. Um, especially this year towards great things that we'll talk about as part of this conversation. All right. Uh, so the, I mean, as I'm sure you're aware, the Web3 space has been absolutely insane over the past year and a half. And it's really good to see like, a, you know, a, a, an old established project like Ocean not resting on their laurels and actually keep building and building and building and deploying and deploying. So like, can you share a little bit what, about what to expect next for Ocean? Like what's exciting that's around the bend? Uh, sure, and even from a, like overall framing of blockchain and Web3, right? it's had exponential growth since the beginnings of the blockchain ideas in 2013, 2014. And for the longest time, it feels small, small, small until it doesn't. And you know, in the last couple of years with the exponential, it now finally feels big. But you know, um, that's only the now. Two years, five years, 10 years from now, it's going to be you know, mainstream. It's going to be, blockchain itself will be rails for civilization, right? And with Ocean, um, our aim is to make uh, a foundational layer for that, which is all about access control for data, mm -hmm. to unlock data um, and to share data, data markets, all of that. Um, so, you know, last year we shipped Ocean V3, which was our first truly great product that we were ha very happy with. And that had um, uh, very nice on-ramps. Basically, when you, ra uh, you can think like fiat on-ramps are f for putting fiat into the crypto ecosystem. Ocean has data on-ramps for data services going into the crypto ecosystem. Every single data asset gets its own ERC-20 token. Uh, so Ocean has data on-ramps, data off-ramps, aka consuming data. And then once you're in the crypto ecosystem, then you can use all the different tooling for ERC-20, such as exchanges, wallets, um, DAOs, et cetera, right? So MetaMask becomes a data wallet, Trezor becomes a hardware data wallet, Balancer becomes a data exchange, and so on. So that's what Ocean V3 already had. Um, On-ramp, plus a really nice um, exchange um, for uh, data sets, uh, buying and selling uh, data sets, and finally the off-ramp. For V4, we are taking, um, we are building on what we had built and released for V3 a year ago, and um, tuning it for for great things. So that means um, we ha are definitively solving rug pulls, mm -hmm. um, which was one of the issues that we saw with V3. Uh, greatly reducing impermanent loss. Um, it's a characteristic of AMMs, but we have um, technology in there to address that. Um, and then on the heels of that, we will be launching our data farming program. So something that is uh, very, very different about Fractal and Ocean is that you guys focus uh, on data sets and you focus on securely sharing and doing compute on these data sets in a privacy preserving way. Fractal centers data around uh, identities. And uh, as you know, like the internet was built without an identity layer, right? This is something that the internet is prepared to do. But as digital becomes a stronger and stronger part of our lives, there are use cases that like, need identity to be unlocked, like voting, for example, right? Um, and it doesn't need to be like, you know, a government election voting. It could be a DAO where one person, one vote actually matters. Uh, but on the other hand, like, you know, the beauty of the internet was the anonymity that it brought, uh, was the comfort that it gave people to make their voice heard that otherwise, like, could make them prosecuted instead. And there's like a big trade-off between these two things. So, like, how do you see the trade-off here? Like, how, how do you think that this will play out? Right. So, I mean, sometimes it's talked about as this either or, where you have full transparency all the time. It's like, you know, information wants to be free, um, to, to paraphrase Stuart Brown. Or, and, and on the other side, you have this idea of like privacy everywhere, 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 right? And um, both of those don't really work because if you have privacy everywhere, then no data is getting shared to anyone and no one sees anything, right? Um, so kind of our philosophy with Ocean is simply um, allow for the shades of gray where people can choose 
what data they sh share with whom and when and under what conditions, and then provide really great tools for that, you know, um, which is basically access control. And that's the heart of what Ocean does is um, access control with fine-grained permissioning um, for sharing data in various contexts, right? And, um, and then who controls that access? The individual, of course, right? If it's the individual that owns the data. If there's a DAO that owns the data, they control it, et cetera. So whoever controls the private keys to that data um, is basically um, running these permissions around this data, of course. And I believe that that is the best because it's very empowering to the individual or the group um, with the, the data that they hold. And at the same time, helping to unlock the value of data, right? For example, you know, you mentioned ocean computed data, this idea of, yeah, there's some data that's private, it's super valuable, um, and if you could somehow share it in a way to benefit the world, it would be great. Like, for example, imagine if you could build a model to predict Parkinson's off of a billion people, right? Well, if you put that all into one giant pile of data, it would be like a privacy nightmare, right? But imagine if um, all those data sets can stay individually with individuals or maybe with hospitals in a secure way, um, and then you have some protocol that um, Build, builds models across all of these in a privacy-preserving way. And this is things like decentralized federated learning to do things like this. And Ocean um, can play a big role to help this. So overall, it's this idea of um, uh, helping to unlock the value of data um, in markets, in free, da free data, et cetera, but really about giving the tools to the people to choose for themselves how this, they want to be share shared. So it's not a binary, black or white. And I think that's uh, something that, uh, you know, if, uh, if things had played out differently and you guys had started building before GDPR came on board, I wonder if things might be different by now because the GDPR is a bit of a big ax that was thrown at a problem that didn't really have a proper technical solution, but with the infrastructure that Ocean provides, like, and like if we use Fractal as well to associate data points with individuals, then like the sovereignty over data and the control over it becomes bubbled up to the surface and something that the user actually can have control over, right? So I think that regular regulation can also be worked differently given that we now will have these primitives to build on top of them. Absolutely. So um, if you think about it, right, like regulation these days acknowledges that the internet exists, for example, right? So um, yes. yes, you know, and you know, it's internet's only been around since for like decades, but, um, but that's very useful, right? So sometimes it takes a while for regulators to catch up with technology. And in the case of GDPR, right, it came out May 2017. Um, Ocean wasn't live then, right? Um, if the, the regulators who, um, you know, the vision of GDPR, the sentiment, um, the values are very aligned with that of Ocean, right, which is about, you know, um, personal privacy, sovereignty over data, etc. Um, and the regulators, of course, they use their tools, which is um, make, making laws, making regulations around that. And, um, of course, Ocean was a note yet. Um, so the GDPR laws are fairly uh, heavy in a sense, right? If Ocean had been out at the time and the regulators were well aware of it, then GDPR could have been a much smaller set of laws. And that's fine. And maybe the laws over time, the GDPR laws over time, will evolve as Ocean goes more mainstream, right? As it becomes more ubiquitous. Uh, it'd be interesting to uh, hear about like how you see that Fractal can use Ocean's infrastructure. So like for us, it is great that somebody else already thought about data markets and we take a lot of inspiration from what you guys have done and we're building on top of you guys as well to deliver what we want to deliver to the market. So for example, are you thinking of a primitive that would allow a publisher to natively on the Ocean protocol distribute the uh, the revenue from a data set to those folks uh, that are owed attribution from this data set. What kind of primitives do you imagine would be important for Fractal to use in the Ocean Protocol, either the ones that exist today or some upcoming ones that we might right. have heard about? Yeah, for sure. So uh, the ones today are helpful and there's an upcoming tweak that will help even uh, not take it that much further, data NFTs. So the stuff today with the ERC-20s, um, basically the publisher themselves, you know, they have copyright to the data and they put the, the ERC-20 tokens into a pool, et cetera, add, add liquidity. And as others buy those tokens to consume, et cetera, um, then uh, the publisher is gaining from that, right? Like, um, especially on the consume side, because um, yeah, when, when it's consumed, then the publisher gets revenue, basically, right? So already, um, there's, there's value right now with that core primitive. And this comes down to, as mentioned, it's the, the on-ramp of the data into ERC-20, Ethereum space, DeFi space, and then the off-ramp and the consume side. So Ocean already has that, and that's going to be valuable for Fractal's um, data sets with ads, et cetera, right? Um, and even identity data, like pure identity data, um, because it can be privacy preserving with computed data. Um, something that's also coming as part of Ocean V4 is data NFTs. So um, 
With, uh, with Ocean V3, where we didn't have data NFTs, if I publish a data set, I'm claiming copyright, and I'm the, um, I can control that UC20 contract directly. But it's hard for me to do an exclusive license of that base IP, that copyright, to some other entity. Um, and whereas with Ocean V4, we are explicitly representing the, the copyright, the base IP, uh, with an ERC721. Mm -hmm. um, and we call those data NFTs. And so that, um, now it can get transferred from person A to person B to person C. And whoever uh, is in control of that, whichever entity, um, they are able to create new ERC-20 token contracts, et cetera, um, that might have different licensing terms, right? One might be licensing data for a day, one might be computed data, one might be licensing for a year, whatever it is. And um, all the um, revenue, et cetera, from that is accruing to this, this base um, ERC-721, right? And once you have that ERC-721, then you can leverage all this amazing infrastructure that has emerged for ERC-721, especially in the last six months with this explosion of NFTs. So that's partly why we did it now. You know, we've been tracking NFTs since, um, well, the, the, the ERC-721 standard since 2017. And uh, the idea of uh, IP itself since 2013 with the first project described, right? So we've been thinking about this for a long, long time. And that's, that, that would be how. So the summary of all of this is, um, there's existing protocols that Ocean has in the form of the ERC-20 for publishers, like Fractal including, um, to accrue value to Fractal and to pass on to its users um, directly. Um, and the data NFTs that are coming down the pipe with V4 will help to make this even that much more flexible. You guys are, as you said before, launching your data farming program soon, and like we are absolutely going to get in on that, and that's going to be amazing. Uh, is there something, like I know that some stuff is still under wraps, is there something that we can talk about already and like kind of explain to the to, the, to folks what it's going to be about? Sure, so um, data farming is a program to incentivize for data consumed volume and liquidity in data pools. So. Um, so if you're a publisher and you ha uh, have uh, published a data asset, and so you've got some stake in those pools, then um, once a week, there's going to be airdrops of uh, ocean tokens to that pool and, um, based on how much consumed volume there is in that pool. And so um, you know, if there's more consumed volume, you know, more and more people have consumed that data set, you're gonna get airdrop more. If you're a staker that maybe hasn't published the data set, but you really believe in a particular pool, then, and you've staked in that pool, then you also get rewards um, as a function of how much you've staked and as a function of how much consumed there is. Mm -hmm. So this, um, and then anyone else too, like anyone who's consuming, maybe they're like, okay, I'm buying this data set because I think it's useful. They're gonna, to get in on, on the extra revenue, they can go and stake too. So the name of the game is um, for people to stake on pools that they think are gonna be having high consume volume, right? And that's the heart of data farming is optimizing for consumed volume, the secondary objective of liquidity. So with this, uh, uh, what, what I really like about this program is that it, it kind of like it focuses on the consumption. So it not only uh, like strengthens the ocean's curation angle by like bringing up and helping discover data sets that are popular or folks expect them to be popular, but also because it distributes rewards according to real world value. Trent, this was perfect. Thank you so much for coming to our office. I'm really looking forward to like, you know, future announcements together. We can't really talk much about this right now, uh, but it was great to already have this chat and hear a little bit about the future of ocean and how fractal like kind of fits into that. So thank you very much for coming. Absolutely. Thank you.